My name is Carlos Mota, I'm, I'm an artist from Colombia, New York. Uh, we are here in the first part of my exhibition uh, in a piece called We Who Feel Differently, which is a work from 2012. Um, it is basically a video archive of interviews that I conducted for a few years with uh, LGBT uh, academics, activists, lawyers, doctors, all kinds of people uh, that have been dealing with uh, questions of sexual and gender politics in four different countries, in Colombia, in South Korea, in the US, and in Norway. Uh, the exhibition is basically divided in five uh, um, video stations or uh, films. Um, each of which are based on a specific topic that was drawn from the larger archive. The archive is also available in uh, the website, which is in one of the stations, that contains all of the interviews and all of the material. The idea is really to have a space uh, to invest a lot of time in. This is an exhibition that should be visited over and over again, because there are close to um, five, six hours just in the videos of material and then there are close to 40 hours of material on the website. So the idea is that it becomes a resource to learn about the development of LGBT politics, sexual politics, issues about gender identity, um, the, the pressing questions that um, affect the internal workings of the movement, if you will. So it's, it's really not something that you can just come in and out. The idea is that, that people visit it, that they come and they also spend time reading some of the publications that are made available to them uh, that relate also to the topics that are at stake. There are five um, monitors. Uh, each one of them is, uh, contains an, an edited version of material drawn from the larger archive of interviews. Uh, the first uh, monitor is a monitor that asks the question of difference. Uh, as you know, the exhibition is titled We Who Feel Differently. And what it is trying to do is to position this, this conversation against the mainstream idea of equality. The idea with the project is to revisit the, the concept of, of difference and think of difference as an opportunity, not as something that needs to be tolerated, but actually as an opportunity to engage uh, society with a different outlook of things. Uh, it is not about being tolerated, it's about actually existing on a different set of terms. So this idea of we who feel differently is a kind of collective outcry, um, uh, thinking that perhaps the idea of equality is just simply not enough, that we should be thinking about difference as, as something that is really a social opportunity, not a social condemnation. Uh, the second monitor here looks at the ways in which uh, certain LGBT politics um, want to assimilate to um, a, a, a heteronormative or, or a more mainstream society. So some of the politics that, that we are struggling to achieve or some of the legislative changes that we are struggling to achieve as well are the, the idea of marriage, for instance. Why do we want to marry? Why do we want to not, for example, challenge the institution of marriage, which has been a, an institution that has excluded so many people for so long, but we want to conquer it, we want to be part of it, we want to be accepted by it. So a, a lot of the people in the videos are, are thinking about this question of assimilation as something that is rather problematic. Maybe what we need is a different set of terms, maybe what we need is a different set of politics, maybe what we need is to uh, more profoundly challenge institutionality in a way that could be uh, more significant. Uh, not to become a part of it, but really to kind of pierce it, to challenge it, to make it be something else. The third video is called Gender Talents and it is uh, populated mostly by trans and intersex activists that are laying out the challenges that those communities face um, politically, socially, in their families, in, in their school. Ultimately the core question there is why is the world, uh, why does the world insist in dividing um, itself into a, a very rigid binary, male-female, femininity, masculinity. What would happen if we start to think about challenging that, that and defying those gender norms a bit, uh, allowing for, for um, gender expressions that are not exclusively binary to have a place to be recognized both legally and socially and culturally. The fourth section is um, a, a chapter that is populated mostly by uh, a conversation around the politics of HIV and AIDS. 
and it centers on a few activists that were participants of an activist movement called ACT UP, which happened during the 1980s and 90s, predominantly in the United States, where um, uh, in response to the inefficacy of the US government regarding the, the AIDS crisis, they organized as a community force using strategies of civil disobedience, intervention, to really affect, intervene and change legislation. To, to bring drugs to people, to force the medical establishment to act fast, to, to produce drugs, to distribute them in a way that, is, that, is, that was urgent and very much needed. And it also talks about the politics of AIDS today. What has happened today that the crisis is more or less contained in the quote-unquote civilized world or first world or nor global north, however you want to call it. The last one of the sections is uh, um, populated mostly by, by activists and artists that are speaking about the relationship between art, art institutions and queer work or work that deals specifically with sex and gender. And it is a conversation that looks historically at the way in which the art institutions and, and the institution of art categorically has excluded uh, and not presented works that deal specifically with these contents. How, for example, to be a successful artist in the marketplace, traditionally, you cannot really be expressing uh, sex ideas about sex and gender in a, in a, in a too open way or in, in a, in a for forward way, because that would hurt your sales. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to, to have a larger conversation about things that are not regarding sexuality and gender. So, and then the last one is uh, where the computer is, the website, as I said earlier, is is the place that brings everything together. This place is also a kind of community space. It's not really an art object that it's meant to be only looked at. It's a place where people are invited to sit, to spend time together. But it is also a stage for certain events. So in different iterations of the project around the world, there have been conferences, there have been performances, there have been readings, lectures, symposia, and uh, other, other events that have taken place here. That's why it, it has this kind of like community center feeling or like even like a children's playground type of, of ambience to it. So the, the exhibition again is not really um, an, uh, something that you come in and out, it's really more a, a space that hopefully it's inviting enough to spend some time and, and dwell into some of the issues that are at stake here. There are two emblems of the project. The hand to me is something that represents the hand of the citizen is, uh, you know, it's both that hand that is begging for a democratic space, but it's also that hand with that suit that it is wearing that it's, you know, represents power. If you look carefully, the button in the hand is, uh, it has been turned into a heart. It has been transformed from a round button into a heart in an attempt to, to you know, to symbolize that maybe power can be softened or that power should be softened, that power should be bent, that power should be challenged. Um, and the world is uh, drawn from uh, La Loteria Mexicana. Uh, it's a famous uh, Mexican card that, that uh, has a lot of popular meaning. But I've intervened it with this triangle. So in the world, in, in the area of South America, uh, I've drawn this triangle, which is, which is of course an emblem for the struggles of, of um, the LGBT community historically. So this figure is really kind of like carrying the weight of, of, uh, of the world on his shoulders. Um, as in an attempt at, to signify the kind of gravity of the politics um, of, of exclusion that have characterized the lives of gays and lesbians historically.